Have you ever installed a roof start to finish? I give them a fucking working $50 million business in a box. And this is just me, you know, asking a question. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, I'm not good at it. Your okay. brain was not in it. $100 drones, let me get three of them. Would you consider yourself as a Grand Cardone of roofing industry? I'm American. I'm a capitalist pig, and um, I want to beat Grant Cardone. So you charge $5,000 for 60-minute sales team. This on your uh, this on your website. So I look like a real jackass. Uh, Justin Parker is a troll, or what happened to your best guy? He's one of these podunk bitch roofers that needs to go fucking work for somebody like you. You're the owner and the founder of Sky Diamonds and president of RRCA. Where do you spend more time weekly? What's more time consuming for you right now? For me, the most time consuming thing is creating content. It's coming up with new ways to change the roofing industry and improve. What companies or for well, which see, company? My mission is to be the best facilitator of success. The litmus test is how well can I help others succeed with my system. So if I can make others succeed with my marketing system, sales training systems, then I can make my own team succeed with it. That's not, that's not But I question. spend more time with Sky Diamonds, okay? I'm more passionate about creating content. I'm more passionate. now. I love door to door. How much more? What's the percentage? It's probably at this point 60 to 70 percent on 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 helping my brothers in roofing. So Sky Diamonds, 60 to 70 percent. A roofing company, 20 30 percent. I don't know. It goes like here recently. I've I've been spending 70 percent of my time with the roofing company, implementing a whole new solar division and hiring more. Sure, I've seen that door to door leaders. Every time you get really good candidates that are like potential leaders, a lot of times you have to stop what you're doing and onboard them. And so um, right now I'm spending 70% on roofing. What do you do at a roofing business right now? What's your role? Well, my role is basically to, to lead the team, to have the vision, but also to hold the team accountable. So it comes down to every single person has their job roles and responsibilities. So it starts first and forth with like a hiring chart where basically the org chart and their job. Are you the group. hiring manager? Are you a HR person then? Well, not the HR person, but I, I have boundaries for each person. I have roles for each person. I have, um, are they contributing up to their potential on our team? And my job is to kind of be everybody's coach. So what we've done more than anything else is kind of built a system where I can be a passenger. So my job is to monitor the meetings, to, to kind of coach my people in each one of their roles in, into the actual actualization of my vision. How does your team look, uh, look at you and what, like for example, for me it could be I'm a marketer. If mm -hmm. I do anything at Storm Group, mm -hmm. it's, it's a marketing. So I'm not a GC. They look I'm at me like a marketer, but they also look at me like the guy who holds the company line. because. I, I have been loyal to my father and we've been business partners and basically I've been the last guy standing at this company and carried the flag. And so when it comes down to it, if someone's you know not living our core values or is cancer. So do you fire people then? Yeah, yeah. and unfortunately, you know, I'm not good at it. You know, I have a, a system. Why you say that? Because it's the most important thing to do in when you're hiring people, get rid of bad people, and it's the hardest thing to do. And every time that you leave someone in your organization that you should have fired, not only do they... Do but they you said you. I'm not good at it. What made you say that? Well, because I'm... Because I know I'm not. I love people. I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm a door knocker. I'm eternally... I go out there and I think I'm going to sell the first person we go talk to. Me and you could go knock a door and I'm assuming the sale before I even go into the field. Can you fire me? How would you fire me? Well, uh, you know, it's funny, you know, I'd I say you hired me. I and used I to fire you by, um, you know, having an all out drag out fight. You know, I've, I've lost my friends, fam you know, family. I've had arguments. You get with. personal. I mean, I've gotten away over the top personal. See, I've been doing this so long. I've made every mistake in the book when it comes to firing. But now I'm going to kind of bring you in. I'm going to say, hey, look, you know, you're not li really living with our core value here of excellence, you know, this is not, you're not showing up for the training in the university, you're not coming to the meetings, you're not trying to develop personally. So, you know, we have a standard here at our RCA where, you know, you bring in 10 leads a week, 10 deals, uh, two, two contracts a week, and that you stay on pace to not get zero contracts in a day. So, you know, if you have consistently someone who is not living up to our core values, they know that, hey, we don't really fit right in here. now. When people don't fit in, they, that's when they start blaming people for their success. The managers, the marketing, the build department. I get it. And you've, you've had the bad guys. I just try to understand your role in the company. Okay, so you spend 30%. I'm mostly, I'm, 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 I'm in charge of the recruiting campaigns. I'm in charge of driving uh, sales. And I, I, when I say drive sales, now I have a, 
sales director. But why HR person cannot do recruiting campaigns? Why you have to do it? Well, because it's the most important thing in my business. And this is where maybe me and you kind of just have two different strategies. I'm trying to just grow this impact as much as possible and be the number one guy of all time that brought people into the roof. Are you a micromanager? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm a guy. I'm just, just curious. No, I'm, I'm actually a guy who is a bad manager to a fault. I'm ADD and organized. And you're like, how do you have this big company? There's 155 families that depend on me. And 155 employees? Yeah. And so that's in the roofing division. And the Sky Diamonds, you know, we have like 10, 15 people. So the truth is, is that I hire people for the right role. I train them to be basically prioritizing what's the most impactful task that's going to get us the most bang for the buck. What's the one big thing? And then I try and keep everybody focused on revenue generation and profit. And like, even if you're like in an accounting or client performance role, you still are protecting profit even from production, protecting the ability to get referrals, which is profits. So trying to tie it all into helping people, a big mission. Because yeah. um, when you walked in there, it said our mission is to set the standard in roofing for service and growth. You know, and so that's twofold for customers and for salespeople. Okay, next question. Uh, where is the, it came from someone in our audience, where is the roofing industry going? What's our industry you think will look like in five years? Well, we're being commoditized. The machines are taking over. If you do not integrate Facebook, machines Google, like Facebook, Google, the, yeah. the artificial data that Home not, Advisor, not robots installed. No, machine. no, me and Dimitri are not the enemies. Home Advisor is. They spend $200 million of Wall Street's money to steal jobs from your, out of your pocket. And, you know, the answer to how you win is a combination of door to door sales strategy, digital marketing. But, you know, I think that in five years, more and more of the local roofers are going to be the, the ones that have sound digital marketing practices, that have sound operation systems. I see that insurance storm chasing gets harder and harder every year. There's less companies that actually are storm chasers. I would consider myself a storm catcher. I'm in Florida and I could do $100 million in business in Florida. Now, am I going to go chase storms? Yeah, I'm going to sell commercial in the storms and I'm going to look for those great opportunities. See, I wouldn't go to Minneapolis unless it was a claim of like 200,000 claims because it goes so fast. Like I'm not just going to go up there for a, a short because there's enough roofers up there. There's so many roofers up there that it's hard to go up there and do what used to be able to be up, you know, done. Just come into town, do $20 million in business in a year, a year and a half. You know, so the future of the roofing business is going to be more managed repair programs, more large deductibles. People are going to be moving into more of a retail what's, hybrid what's insurance What's your take on it? What's your take on NPRs and Matt Skies? And okay, so, so you, gotta, you, you, know, you heard guys like Joe, and I saw his interview, and I respect Joe. But you got to realize, my uncle taught LC this business, and I grew up comparing myself to LC. And LC, you know, basically took my dad's idea of Claim Express of, of building uh, a, a platform that would connect the industry. Do you agree group. that it's pretty much GC and that Matt Sky is a GC? I mean, it's well, one of my friends is getting sued right now, and I can't even tell you his name, but he's one of LC's friends, and I'm not going to dip anybody in the dirt. But LC just collected millions of dollars, and yet this guy's holding the bag for this hundred thousand dollar lawsuit that's going to cause him to create. Okay. Yeah, because Mad Sky had him act like a public adjuster. He put a impact resistant shingle on instead of like a grand manner. And because there was a blurred line that the insurance company paid for this high quality shingle, my guy, he could have put on the exact shingle, but he was trying to stay within that cheap boundary. Of, and so he's the contractors in the middle. And when the, you go to lawsuit, the guy don't have your back. And so like, here's the deal, my uncle, there's a company called 3C. They were, they were partners. And LC, you know, they, they, they frivolously spent, they acquired $10 million in debt. And, you know, you don't know this, but my uncle, you know, was either murdered or killed himself. And, you know, my LC's married, you know, to my uncle's wife's sister. That's just his and, family. And, it's, and so what I'm saying is, is that part of my uncle's reason if he did commit suicide was he acquired $10 million in debt. And so when LC just sold that company for millions of dollars, well, it's actually some... It is personal for you. It's personal. But I think they're LC all bad for the goal. business. They're all bad for the business. I mean, if you want to get leads... There's one on the rise right now from Florida. What's uh, 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 not Aspen. Uh, 
What's their name? We, uh, we've seen them. Uh, Anytime that you're going to work for the insurance company, they're always going to pull purse strings. They're always going to basically make you hold the bag. At any given time, they can sell you out. And you're just a pawn in the game. If that's the game you want to play to get your foot in the door in the neighborhood so you can knock more doors, do business with the devil. Sometimes the devil you know is better than the one you don't. And let me tell you something. LC taught me a lot about how to run a sales meeting, how to recruit a sales team. He, he built Aspen. You know, he's a, he's a leader in our industry, and it's not anything particular. I think what he built was a good business model for himself. And, you know, yes, did the insurance companies capitalize on it, but he built value, and they, they paid for it. So as an entrepreneur, I look at him and say, good job. And for me, is his business model going to affect me? Fuck no. Why? Because, you know, the, I'm the modern day. You're going to compete with him. Yeah, well, and I don't need to fucking get leads from the insurance company to get leads. I'm a leads machine. I can create leads through Facebook, through knocking doors, through Google, through direct mail, through phone calls, telemarketing. But do, do, do you think we'll have more uh, Matt Skies out there? Like more companies? Yeah, but gonna... I, I, I think that there's going to be more Mad Skies, and I think there is... Uh, there is opportunity in that space, um, and I do want to build a platform. Um, you know, that's sort of my dad's vision, and the platform would be not tied to the insurance company, but tied to the insurance agent, who might have a little bit more, you know, skin in the game to have the customers back. Because, you know, what we want to do is we want to sell a product that allows people to have a warranty on their roof and uh, a zero to, you know, small payment for their deductible if the, in case of a storm. Where do you see insurance um, companies' trends going? I, I know they make it harder. Okay, and harder. so here, here's the deal. Everyone else, you know, I've been doing this my whole life. So, you know, Stormers is my family. So, like, there, there's always going to be natural disasters, and there's always going to be people needed to go respond <coughs> to re reinforce um, the, uh, the other people. So... Um, no, I think the insurance companies will always have to pay for storm damage. Uh, there always will you be bad enough storms where storm, storm chasing is a good lucrative business opportunity. Um, I try to go to markets, like I only set one market outside of Florida last year and it was Billings, Montana. Place nobody else went, had huge hail. We did, we, we from this room not right next door, sold about, you know, we got like 100 commercial inspections and we sold, you know, probably about $5 million in commercial work. and we built a residential kind of storm around those commercial jobs. And so that's kind of like the hybrid. The hybrid model is, look, go after the best jobs in the market, the commercial, the high-end residential. And in Minnesota, that might be the 50 square roofs with windows, with siding. You know, I don't, in every market, the high-end job looks different, but I moved my company to where I could get, you know, 25,000 profit per project. And, you know, I've always kind of looked for the best place in America to sell roofs. Minneapolis is certainly one of those places. Well, next question. Um, have you ever installed a roof start to finish? No. No, I've, I've, I've gone on a roof and uh, I'll tell you three stories. One, my neighbor in Texas was like, I have a roof repair. It was a 7, 8, 12, I forget, two stories up. Almost fell off the roof. It took me about um, an hour and a half to do like five shingles. And then then the shingles fell off and I got called back. So I look like a real jackass. Um, second time we did a free roof for one of our customers and I got up on the roof and I helped the crew and made stupid videos and took pictures and put them on Facebook. But that was fun. Um, and then like, you know, there was a time when I was a salesman, I decided I was going to like roof somebody's shed for, and I don't know why for the extra money, but it looked like terrible. It was three tab and the lines were all jacked up, bro. I'm not a roofer. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a sales and marketing guy that is um, a second generation roofer. I know everything there is about having someone else do the roof. But you can't concentrate, maybe you... No, it's not, it's not that I can't concentrate, it's like, look, man, I, I was... Why couldn't you make straight lines when you install those? Like? Probably because I was thinking about some sort of way to generate leads or some sort of way to hire salesmen or some sort of a, like cheat code. Your brain was not in it. My brain's never in something that is not the most, you know, expensive use of my time you know you know it's like you have hourly time you came in here like Lee, i gotta move fast you know you, you know anything that's less than five thousand dollars an hour we have to figure out how not to get ourselves and that's i love door to door but the problem is is all the wasted time on the on the uh, behind the windshield you know i see these guys i've taught some of these guys how to find the commercial business owner and drive to the storm and sell jobs and some of these guys are selling millions of dollars but they still have to stop what they're doing get in their truck drive and I wanted to find a way that, you know, if I wanted to go fishing in the middle of the week, 
that I could and that my company would run and you know forgive me uh, being a little bit um, a little bit uh, looking like a Florida person down here but that's what we were doing we were doing some fishing but these guys got it I mean and you know for me my job is to bring in top talent my job is to keep the marketing machine running my job is to like keep the guys inspired and knock more doors and I love doing the sales training and, and, and through zoom call I can impact the whole office so so whenever um, you talk about you know being a coach, I think that it's honorable that you have a roofing business because there's a lot of coaches that don't actually have a business. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, false information out there. What's your sport? What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport is basketball, but um, I play baseball. We got softball. Do you have court around here? Oh, dude, softball. Yeah. No, no, court. Oh, yeah. You want to play? Sure. Oh, okay. You're going down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's going to be tough. It's going to be real tough. I'm, I grew up in, in, in my, my mom was a teacher. Can you and, dunk? And no, I can't dunk, but um, I was shorter than everybody else and I learned how to dribble. And um, I grew yeah, we're, we're gonna play. my last year in high school. And so uh, I played okay. high school basketball. Favorite social media? I'm a Facebook guy, but you know, in the end, it comes down to uh, Instagram is where it's at for new recruits. So basically, the Instagram is where I spend a lot of time. My Insta stories are where a lot of the close connections, and and I really enjoy Instagram. But you know, new new thing is YouTube. And guys, um, if you hadn't seen the new stuff that's been coming out on my channel, please subscribe. Um, it's going to be something that I'm going to be committed to, like you. And I see basically how. You know, YouTube is like the place that I should have all of my platform as the central place and move it out from YouTube to the other, other platforms and stuff like that. So 2020 is going to be focused on more free content through YouTube. Okay. Um, last person you fired? Um, see, the last person I fired, I, I didn't fire him, but he, he's probably been fired at least three or four times and I'd probably rehire him if he asked the right way. Everyone would tell me. So he was fired from your company three times? Uh, he's a salesman, so he's like an independent contractor. And basically, I don't like people that are um, constantly... So what happened last time? You said you didn't hire him, fire him, but somebody else did like... Well, what's the last time you made a decision to let go of someone like what? I don't need a name. I just need to know circumstances and what did he do to lose your trust or? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess the, 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 the last time that I could think about letting somebody go was um, a guy a lot of people might know on the Internet. We won't even mention his name, but I'll tell you the story. And um, I knew that this guy had a great energy for door-to-door. -door. He was great for leading the door-to-door -door team, but he had a problem. He had some issues. Uh, we're, roofers all struggle with their, their demons, okay? And this guy's demons were dark. And, you know, he was turned his life together with me. He came to me with nothing. And, uh, you know, he did really well in our, in our company, but he didn't do the protocol that we asked, which was enter the information in the system. And we have a culture now that instead of talking it out and handling it like family, that there, people love to throw dirt on the internet and character assassinate. And what's funny is I paid him, you know, a lot of money, and he got Rolexes. And I know last year he didn't make a lot of money, and he wishes that he was a part of the family again. But I made a decision to say, look, you crossed the line. We're not accepting you back. And the consequences of that decision were terrible. He tried to blackmail me. He tried to turn me into the state. He tried to. Um, he just, you know, just, 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 just all kinds of crazy stuff where basically he was like a brother to me and it was very painful to go through somebody that you take from homeless to making 200,000. Now that's just one guy, but whether it was, um, my best friend one time told me that he was starting his own company. He, he invited me to his bachelor party and he was like, uh, Hey, I got some news. He was doing my production. He's like, I'm starting my own company. I'm taking three guys. So he's like, oh, yeah, let's party. I'm like, let's fight. Like, no, let's not party, motherfucker. But I got over it, you know. I've been through it. What I've learned is that in the end, like, you can't, you can't be mad at people. If you don't give people a place to grow, they will go. It's your responsibility to give them the boundaries. If they don't fit within your core values, if you accept somebody that's possibly cancerous that has an issue with drugs or alcohol or has an issue with, you know, just, you know, a track record of lost relationships, then... You know, chances are they're going to do the same thing to you. And you can play with fire a little while before you get burnt, but eventually, you know, you do have to kind of, you know, get that. And 
unfortunately, in getting rid of that one guy, there was other people that I shouldn't have got rid of that basically ended up selling millions of dollars in roost for another company, but they were so close to that one other person that it was it was just something that they, look. In the end, I want to keep everybody. The biggest thing that hurts me is whenever I have great people and they fit into an awesome role in my team and I have them making money, making an impact, and that they don't continue to grow in that role. I take it too personal sometimes. And that, if you're talking about moments where I wanted to quit the business, you know, those are the moments. Like whenever I, I can remember coming in off of a cruise, one of my best guys um, said he was starting his own company and he was going to take jobs and, uh, you know, he, he was taking five, four or five guys and it's in Boston. And basically, I lost like $5 million in business. He's a $5 million book of business. And I've lost many of those guys. And every single time that I lose those guys, I think, what can I do to make my vehicle, my roofing company, so attractive that no one will ever leave it? Uh, don't you think uh, it has to do something with the business model? You know, like 50-50-10, uh, where I was split. Because I feel like... That struggle, I hear it a lot from storm chasers because we open books to them and I've seen your books, you already showed me, like they see the numbers. I personally feel, and this is my opinion, mm -hmm. that it's the worst mistake we make as a business owner to open the books, uh, not even to open them. I'm, I'm transparent too, my guys know the profit and stuff, but to do that profit share business model, mm -hmm. because now you're partners, he's not employed, it, it's, I mean, don't you think it's something to do with the business model? All those relationships where we keep you guys keep well, losing. I don't. You know, when you there's a difference. If I wanted to just go along and keep it small and make a million or two million dollars off of doing six million in sales, I wouldn't have these headaches. But why not make them employees? Well, they are employees, and that's well, what we've they're done. They're independent. Yeah. You know, when, when you have a guy who is five million dollar in business. You know, he has a book of five million dollars. I mean, I, you can see his mind. Like, why does he need you? Like, what, where's the leverage? Well, there's a lot of leverage. There's leverage in the opportunity to sell commercial roofs with me, to get leads to sell residential, to learn how to sell tile, to learn how to um, sell millions in a year door to door, to create leads off of. I, I guess my argument would be, McDonald's would not let you know how much money you make by flipping burgers. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you, okay, we, we make $6 on each burger. Our profit margin is 90%. It's right. not your business. You hire for $15 an hour mm -hmm. to flip the burger. That's it. That's the agreement. So, Without, so we've always looked at it like a business opportunity and it, less as um, uh, an employer relationship. And what I mean by that is you, you teach people how to become their own profit centers. First, uh, when they sell, then to recruit, then to build and lead teams. And it goes from you know sales per salesperson to team leader to sales manager to general manager to you know maybe even- But you train your competition essentially. Well, And those cases, to me, they prove- Let me explain to you that this, my new book has got every bit of one of my Facebook advertising secrets, every one of my recruiting secrets. I'm training my competition every single day because I put value into the marketplace and what comes back to me is talent. What comes back to me is the, the most innovative growth strategies, I share them. And guess what, here's the deal. I learn something from every roofer I coach. Every roofer I coach puts pressure on me to bring them new shit, better shit, a better way to generate a lead, a better way to sell a commercial deal. I'm constantly being pushed. I'm like Tony Hawk out there trying to figure out the 900. Okay, when it comes down to it, how do you duplicate roofers creating leads off of Facebook? You know it's hard to do, right? Now here's the thing, Dimitri. I recruit salespeople that are already like what other people call like ruined. They already have bad habits, they're from another company. One of which, okay, just, now I hate to say this because I, I, this is just an example. This is an example you know and it's personal. So don't take this personal because I did this right. I sold Sky Diamonds to a salesman. One thing's either happened, either owner buys a salesman, salesman buys a salesman, uh, Sky Diamonds. If salesman buys it, likes it, I think, well, let's work with, let, let me see if I can work with you. So. I don't recruit my competitors, comp my, their sales reps, but anyways, my point is this guy, Jimmy Ross, sold 1.4 million for your friend, at Direct Metal Roofing, but they didn't want to fucking do door-to-door -door and insurance. And we come into town and we're killing door-to-door -door and insurance and Jimmy's like, fuck this, I'm gonna go with you. Now Jimmy's been trained. He sold 1.4 million last year. 
You think I'm going to tell Jimmy no, he can't come to work for me? I mean, Tony never bought my shit. He turned his nose up at my shit. He said, I don't need your help. You know what I mean? And so, guess what? Plata or plomo. Silver or lead, motherfucker. You could have bought my shit and I wouldn't have hired your salesperson because I would have been your coach. Once I become your coach, we don't solicit each other's people. That's not how it works. But if your salesperson buys my shit and you don't give him opportunity to grow and he's coming to me and I'm not soliciting him, then, buddy, that's, that's what we call, you know, and that's why a lot of people, they're like, I don't want to mess with Lee. But the thing is, is I don't solicit. I wait for people that need the help to come to me. Next question. First time you went in front of the judge in business. Uh, court story or okay so first of all I've only been in front of one judge in business my entire life okay. um, and you the, were suing or someone was suing you no someone was suing me and it was for uh, a leak that was they were trying to get the whole floors in their house and we ended up settling with a mediator for like three grand but it was my first time that I had dealt with court but you know staying out of court did you win uh, I mean, I didn't pay for their whole floors. Did I win? No, I paid three grand for the leak. And was it partly my fault? Yes. But was it there before? Yes. So, I mean. Got it, accepted. Um, this is a good question. All right. The best ad you ever ran that uh, made you the most money? Like the best ad, uh, whether it's- uh, Okay, so the best ad I ever ran came after I was punched in the face. Um, yeah, it, but I, I, I know what you're talking about. It, it, it was a tour of a tile roof, and uh, I took it to heart that the guy punched me in the face for going on his gate. I thought I could sell the guy because he needed my help, but he was upset. And basically what I did was is I talked about hidden damage. I gave So the ad was for RRCA or Skydive? No, the ad was for RRCA. Now, now that ad, we sold at least $2 million in roofs around it. But there was one video I shot, and it was right before Hurricane Michael. And I, I did basically uh, five things that they need to do to protect themselves after the, their responsibilities. And all it was was a public service announcement, and basically the video got shared in Panama City area like a thousand times, had hundreds of thousands of views. So, I mean, we, we easily got $5 million in residential roofs off of that one video alone putting it in, in the area while the hurricane was forming. We were getting leads as the hurricane was hitting, right after it hit. So Public service announcement, I like it. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a story in here in the first chapter, it's called My First Big Marketing Idea. And basically before Facebook, I did um, voice broadcasting. And I would basically have a phone room and I'd send out this message and say, Public service announcement. You are in the path of a catastrophic hailstorm. Please press one now for your free hail damage inspection. Hail damage is not visible from the ground, but it can cause leaks. And they press one and the phones ring off the hook. But that was before Facebook marketing. And uh, I what, did, what year was it? Uh, it was 2010 11. I mean, the do not call us started to really become, and I was breaking it. And my dad called it fishing with dynamite. So before I got a fine from the FCC, I stopped doing it. But um, it taught me how to use the information because I was using the coal directory. and. That's how I started realizing, you know, the information, the map, you know, it's all in one place. So you start using data and, you know, what you were seeing in there with the direct mail and the hand address, that's driven through people physically seeing an old roof. We don't send any mail to people with new roofs. Sure. You have a call center here. Yeah. What's your take on the call centers in the industry? Because it, it's a hot mess right now and it's getting worse and worse. Okay. What, what, what do you think about okay, like so just big, like, big, okay, big so, players? So just like this, for one, the, the biggest player of all that is most legitimate is a good family man. He generates more than 100,000 leads uh, a month, I mean a year. And uh, every lead that I've ever needed replaced, he's replaced any time that I've asked Who's him. Who's that? His name's Jose. And basically he's, he's Joe sells his leads. Um, that's Joe's source. Yeah, I know. You know, and I'm well aware. and and basically. I'm actually fine. Uh, he just invited me recently. Yeah, I told him he wanted you know he wanted me to help him tell his story, and I'm like Jose, like I will go who, down. Who there. else buys his leads? Uh, a lot of people. Like who? But I spend ten to twenty thousand a month with Jose. But do you have call center here? But he's what we call the and we call it the Latin Air Force. There's two types of leads. Okay, there's your carpet bombs, which are basically like bombing the whole town, all right? That's Jose. He like gets 70 callers to just blast the phones and he'll get leads 
by whole regions, okay? I do the smart bombs. We put a red dot on someone's home and we use a targeted pitch. We say, hey, my name's Lee, I'm with our RCA. We're taking care of Miss Jones up the street and uh, we notice that your roof is not addressed. We, we want to know, you know, and we tell them specifically, you know. Have you used Best Storm Leads in Delavari? Um, De Delavari's been around a long time. I know he's legitimate. I know he's Jose's biggest competitor. I've been loyal to Jose basically because um, he's a good dude. And if you can get a guy that he is a good guy. I like him. And a lot of people, like, they wouldn't share their secrets. Like, what value is it for me? Maybe I could just sell leads to my clients for that, you know? Um, but I'm not, I'm not a guy that you'll find hides anything. I don't hide. I have nothing to hide. Well, 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 Doc, we'll see. It's not over yet. Okay, let's um, go. <laughs> With your mad Russian. How, how many roofs you personally sold in one year the most? Like, what's your record? See, I'm, I, I am not. I had a guy that sold 400. Yeah, I've, I've seen the interview that guy, with him. That, yeah. Nothing like no, that. No, but I'm talking like, about probably you. Probably like 100. 100 roofs? Probably 100 roofs. Was it back in Texas or here? Well, I've done it all over. I did it in St. Louis. Uh, I, the St. Louis was a year where basically, um, but I always mix it up. I mix it up with, you know, high end residential. In that, neighbor, in that storm, uh, we were outgunned. And sometimes it's not about how many you sell as far as like knocking. Well, I sold one guy who had a wood shake roof that everybody knew in the, in the, in the town, and we, it was a highly competitive job. My uncle's company, we were fighting for it. They said we didn't have a license, and they trashed us all over town, but that one job led to a bunch of other jobs. So I've always sold by spheres of influence and trying to be smart about Because when it comes down to it, I'm a good door knocker, but I, I honestly could be more... Uh, discipline to hardcore door-to-door. -door. Like some of these guys that we're bringing in from the door-to-door -door world, alarm world, security world, these guys knock way more doors than me. They're way more like- More discipline. More way, and, and these guys are coming in and these guys have sold 300 uh, alarms in a year and they're going out. You know, we had a new guy sell not nine, nine jobs, nine jobs this week in one day. Wow. Uh, how many deductibles have you waived personally, you personally? Oh man, you know, <laughs> This is the funny part. I don't, I don't eat deductibles. I eat steak. But um, you think Grant paid the first deductible? Come on, man. You know. But I've, I've waived a few. Um, but when it comes down to it, you don't ever have to eat the deductible if you are um, good at working a claim. You know. And and I hate to say it, but if you know the appraisal process, if you can maximize and exactimate, and you can take this on record for it is what it is. Robin Peter to pay Paul with ACV monies. You know, you're completely eligible to do that as a homeowner. So, I mean, how many deductibles? Plenty. But when it comes down to it, you know, the easiest sell in America is getting the insurance company to pay. Is all we have to do is get the. We had a seventy thousand dollar deductible picked up, cashier's check this week. I saw it on the WhatsApp. So these these people, they have the money to pay it. You know, offering in-house financing using you know these new financing tools, you shouldn't have to pay for a deductible. And early on in my career, I certainly didn't have the you know, the stand up for paying the deductible. And also the deductibles were smaller back then. $500 deductible was a lot easier to be like, oh yeah, why not? You know, but Accepted. I've waived a few. Accepted. Uh, are you Grant Cardona, um, Grant Cardona or Gary Vee? Um, I am definitely uh, Grant because Grant helped me as an apartment investor. He helped me uh, set up Sky Diamond University. Um, because no, but still a c content and personality. If you have to choose between the two, well, Grant is is like the uncle that that you hate to fight because he's got a hell of a right hook. But more importantly, like I, he gets on my nerves from time to time. But I still I'll take Grant every day because it's more it's more of my style. And now I like Gary, but Grant he's evolved. Like he he's selling the sales training. He's got the the real estate and. When it comes down to it, you know, I've seen him grow almost a billion dollars in net worth. And when you look at like his Google search volume, or when I, start, I first started messing with him, my whole plan to get famous was sell Grant Cardona roof, film it. I didn't tell you everybody it cost me $200,000. I didn't tell everybody it was the hardest negotiation of my life. I didn't tell everybody that he almost broke my back. But I will tell you, I still support him. And uh, you know, I'm definitely a Grant Cardona guy. Would you consider yourself as a Grant Cardone of the roofing industry? Yeah, I would. I really would. And that's because is that your goal? I brought is that your Grant Cardone to the roofing business. 
my dad was a car salesman and um, so I can't help it my salesman like how I am as a personality and um, you know what's what what goes beyond Grant is that I'm the next generation so I understand the digital marketing a, a different degree and Grant never owned car dealerships so he offered car sales training but he never offered the CEO training and like I said those 155 families those core leaders you know some of the different relationships that you have to manage as the boss like when you ask me what I am I am Tony Soprano okay thanks Evan uh, is earth flat no earth is not flat <laughs> okay um, uh, Justin Parker is a troll or what happened to your best guy well you know this is the whole deal it's like I really I really wish people wouldn't make life-changing mistakes that couldn't be undone because I have a forgiving heart and you know I know how much you know he was able to do with us and you know he's certainly uh, he's got his demons, he's got his issues. Was he a troll or he re really believes that Earth is flat? No, he really believes it. But guys, he, guys, I mean, this is what happens, dude. You, you overdo stuff in life and your, in your brain. And, and when I say overdo, you could be overdue feeding into these irrational theories. What is that doing for you? If you think that the Earth is about to end, if you're focusing on that, how are you going to create? How are you going to have good relationships? Negative thinking. Yeah, and so, you know, the man was an incredible attitude when he was in the right shape but compared to some of these some of these it was a p always puzzled me when I look at his post and you your association he was like your best guy his control uh, one thing I loved about him is, is those uh, pictures of him uh, dropping the yard sign like yeah, yeah. in the movie like, that, yeah, that that was genius so that was what his comeback was he came back like when he came to me let me tell you so the, the whole, guy who you fired let me tell you the whole Justin Parker story he came to me on a bus about two o'clock in the morning and I started getting all these like invoices of, or through Facebook, ding, 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 pictures of him signing roofs. And I'm like, okay, come on. And he comes to Boston. He's got no bag, no clothes. And he's like, I'm ready. I'm like, well, we need to go to Kohl's. So we go to Kohl's. And he does great there. He sells a lot of jobs. But he fell off a little bit. He went off on the deep end for a while. And he, and he met a girl. And um, they got pregnant. And he had to, like, turn his life around. So basically he came back to us. And that's about the time of Peoria. And he had to work his way back out of a hole, which he did an amazing job of. Uh, a second time around, he was really, really dedicated to our company, to our culture, and his job was to get 1% of every lead he generated, but he couldn't keep up with the leads he generated. So instead of like just coming back to me and having a conversation and squaring up, you know, he just wanted to say, you owe me all this money, and I don't have any proof of it. And instead of talking about it, you know, we paid him a lot, and we gave him Rolexes, and we did everything we could. But the truth was is that basically, you know, he had some responsibility things that were his part. And, and instead of, like, just continuing to come back and have the person's back, we have a culture where it's better just to throw people to the wolves on the Internet and, like, character assassinate. And I'm already a dynamic enough personality people love to hate. That's fine. But the truth is is that, you know, you know out there there's, there's a lot of problems, a lot of demons out there for the people in the door-to-door -door and contractor world, I hate to see anybody get eaten alive by those demons. Um, and once someone's demon starts getting a hold of them, you have to let them go. And it's sad it's when they're like family, it's like they're, they're dead to you. You have to think about business, protect the business. Have you ever invested in Bitcoin? No. You not did not buy? Not, not a Bitcoiner. I, Any I, other crypto? Yeah. Facebook, no. But seriously, <laughs> I, I know, but I've, I invest into views. You know, views. I've, so you purchase the views? Yeah, mean? well, well, you know, people just don't realize. They think that I'm constantly on their phone and it's free. But I spend um, probably more money advertising Sky Diamonds than GAF spends advertising GAF on Facebook. I think they're running right now 189 ads for HDZ shingle. But how much are they spending? Are they spending 50 Gs a month? 189. I mean, they spend like 50, 60 million a year, I think, in marketing easy. I know, but they, they, they have mismatched. They don't spend enough on Facebook. They haven't personalized their content. They haven't figured out how to create, like, that character that well, people would follow. I can't talk about GF, so Yeah, I know. Let's, um, have you ever been scammed? Uh, well, yeah, I've been scammed. I'm in the roofing business. What was the last time? <laughs> um, the last time I was scammed, I bought $100 drones on the Internet. Like, the pop-up popped up on my deal, and I'm like, $100 drones, let me get three of them. <laughs> and they were not real. Um, like, what, cardboard not working? What, what do you uh, mean not real? Probably uh, 300, 
you know, no, they didn't send anything. They just didn't, they didn't send anything. Last time I was scammed, a public adjuster, I referred a, a half a million dollars worth of deals, maybe a million dollars worth of deals. He sat on them, didn't do shit, didn't, didn't get an engineer, and uh, we actually found an engineer. The guy engineer paid, he turned it over to a lawyer. Lawyer's getting the roof approved, he's getting his 10%. The PA won't pay for the engineer. To me, that's a scam. Public adjusters that don't do their job, that don't do estimates, they're scams. Okay? Attorneys that just take 33% and hold contractors' money up, they're scam. True. I agree 100%. We need more content about it. Let's produce that content. Yeah, oh, let's go. Talk about that on your YouTube channel. All right. Uh, how much did you spend on marketing last year? So, I probably between numbers? both companies are, am spending about, you know, close to six figures a month. So, you know, I, I would say that... Which company is bigger? So, our RCA, the roofing company, mm -hmm. we, we spend ten to 20000 a month on the telemarketing leads. Yeah. We spend... What's that? Yeah. We spend uh, 3000 to 5000 letters a week, David. Mm -hmm. So, about 20000 a month on, on direct through. mail. We got the telemarketing leads. We pay our, our lead setters $50 a lead. We spend, you know, a good amount of money there. Facebook, we're spending, um, like when they when new markets pop up and stuff like that, it go the ad spend goes up. But we're we're probably spending between ten and twenty grand on Facebook a month, and then on Google about ten grand a month on Google. And then with Sky Diamonds, I'm spending um, about it, it it depends, but right now it's it's about uh, fifteen hundred a day, so about fifty thousand dollars a month. And then um, all of my clients, we run ads and help people with uh, advertisements, about 45 roofers. And, you know, a lot of roofers are afraid to spend f more than 500 bucks a week. So, sure. but some of my clients spend, you know, 5,000 a week. So we, we are spending about 250,000 to $500,000 a month on Facebook. And, you know, it just teaches me, you know, it's markings only testing. and. You know, I learned from everybody's campaigns. We had one guy from Three Kings Roofing generate 111 recruiting leads. And you know how we do the big checks here? I've never ran an ad with the big checks. And basically, it's just a one-line deal, and it goes straight to a landing page. They've hired like 20 people off of this ad, and it's just a picture of a big check. But I wouldn't have learned that without running ads for like 40 different clients. Let's talk about it because I actually have a question written down. Right. Uh, I've seen your recent post, it says you in one week you have 546 recruits. Mm -hmm. Looks like you're becoming a recruiting agency. Mm -hmm. The question is though, um, how many did you, uh, how many will- Let me define the recruit. Let me define what a recruit was in that post. Okay. A lead generated off of Facebook from an ad that someone said they were interested in the roofing business opportunity, which always doesn't turn into an interview. I had a company in um, uh, Columbus, Ohio. They had 70 applicants, and they hired eight guys. Um, one of my recent guys in Atlanta, Georgia, he was a firefighter. He had 50 applicants. He got so, so how many, eight people to the Out of 546, if you would have to guess, how many was actually like hired? interview hired? Yeah. Well, I can only bring the horse to water, then they got to like close them on getting them to the office, you know, and I teach them how to do that. But I would say that, you know, 20, 20, 30 guys last, last I mean, that, that's a low number because I, I want it to be fair and I, and I guarantee that we generated that many. So how, how, many, how many people are you actually recruited for like last year? So with Tyler Melton, we generated about 30 reps. You know, that's one guy. LOA construction. Listen to this. Listen. Sure. The guy started with me and I thought he couldn't do it because it was a sixty grand program. He's only doing six hundred thousand in business. Mm -hmm. He had three guys. And he was a great businessman. Say he was in econ business two years ago. Well, he's got twenty three sales guys now and his his company, um, you know, we we helped like 20, 20, 20 recruits. So I mean I, I I don't really know exactly the numbers of how many people we did last year. But what we started figuring out, and if you want to know the secret, it's in this book. You can get the hiring secret. We use Facebook and Instagram to hire, not job postings on Indeed and not job postings on ZipRecruiter. You know, it's a combination of lifestyle video, a testimonial video from your sales reps, and doing live events uh, using the Facebook events function. 
Okay. And, uh, you know, I help people in the place that you're sitting right now. If you're watching this and you wanted someone to come to work for your company, you want to tell your story, want to tell your brand. Part of the reason why people might come to work for you is because they know your story mm -hmm. and they like align with that. And those people end up sticking with you longer because they really like who you are and they align with your core values. Well, a lot of times I help my clients do an interview in this podcast and so many people have been hired from these videos. And what we do, Dimitri, is you think, well, this is not really an ad video. Well, it's not. We use it as an engagement campaign. So we advertise to build an audience. See, because we're not just spending money to create leads, we're spending money to create impressions, collect data and build an audience so that we can retarget them. Because I don't want to be just a digital clipboard salesman. Hey, come to work for me. Hey, come sell for me. Hey, come sell for me. I can help you make a lot of money. I want to tell you the story of how I went from zero to blue collar millionaire and how my system could potentially be the best retarget you with testimonial ads, retarget you with lifestyle ads, retarget you with an invitation to come to your live event. What's the turnover? Like, okay, yeah. if, if you hire 100 people, how yeah. many will actually last one year? Okay, so there's a quote, and this is like a warrior quote, you'll like it. And it's, a, it's from a, a Greek philosopher. He said like, when you are building an army, 100 people are in the army, 80 of them are targets at war. So if 20% of the income comes from you know, if 80% of the income comes from 20% of the people, that's, that's true. 80% of the people that you hire at targets. And then he would say basically that you, you had 10 soldiers and then you had the king's guard. You had like nine elite guys, top performers that could guard the king. You know, so out of, out of 100, you had nine. That, I'd call those guys million dollar salespeople. And I'd call the other ones when I'd like the, the next 10, like $500,000 salespeople. And then you got one. And that one is a freaking that I'm, I'm one of those guys you're one of those guys you could you know sell two million in a year you could you know basically carry sky a company on your back the sky's the limit and that guy is really rare to find and when is you talk a is it a talent for those guys or work ethics no it's 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 a couple for the one guy for the one guy it's it the number one thing that matters most is work ethic the number two thing that matters most is do they have that dominant and influence personality where, they're, where they, where they want to win, where they want to be the roofer's strongest guy, where they want to be the roofer's best coach? Where they, you know, and you have that dominant personality. I can tell. That's why you've been successful and you've been, why you're a good salesman. You know, but, but I didn't have plan B. That's all no, I it's, that, That's the other part. And that is, that is how, how bad do you want it? Work ethic is great, but if, if you just have this like meek, um, my buddy Taylor, he's a legend, a door-to-door -door legend. He's in the other room here. He says um, that timid salesmen have skinny children. And uh, that's basically like you could have a great work ethic and you could be scared to ask for the business. You could be a soft-spoken dude that's not getting attention and you can suck at sales. And now that, that's, sure. that's why you got to get better and sharpen the sword every day. And people say sales training is stupid. How much stress do you have right now? Like in your life, what's yeah. your stress? Well, I'm wearing a bathing suit. I, uh, I had to leave a trip, the water. Well, you, you might be doing all of that because you're stressed. Well, let me tell you, um, I love my job. I put an immense amount of stress on myself because I want to be the greatest of all time. Stress to me, pressure makes diamonds. I thrive off of it. I live One to 10, how stressed are you right now? Oh, I'm completely relaxed. This is me doing what I love best. This is my flow state. This is, this is, so when I'm doing, I'm, I'm talking when about I'm like creating, period of your life, do you have, oh, you know, like on a period of my life? Yeah. Um, on a period of my life, I feel like that I'm putting myself through, uh, have you ever seen Ford versus Ferrari? Uh, but my, that's my next movie. I'm probably going to watch, you it, watch on, it on the fly. You think about me because I'm the guy driving that race car and the wheels are fucking barely falling off and I don't give a fuck. I will drive it till the motherfucking wheels fall off, dude. And, I, and when you talk about stress, yeah, there's a lot of stress. A lot of people couldn't do what I do. I carry the hearts and souls of... What does your wife think about that? Well, she thinks it's crazy. She, she wants me to take it easy. She doesn't realize what we're building is an empire. I mean, she does. She supports me. But like I opened a solar division and she's like, oh my God, you got a coaching company. You got a roofing company. Now you're going to solar company. I'm never going to see you. How do you explain you. it to her? Well, I tell her that... Um, I don't, she knows that basically if, if it's something that's in my DNA that is part of my purpose, where I feel like I have to be the best facilitators of success for blue collars. I have to introduce the roofing sales opportunity to more people than anybody else in, in, in the Let's world. Talk about work-life balance. I get all of that. No, but, but my wife, she, she, um, 
she she's accepted the fact that I'm a lunatic. I mean, and she's down for it. We've been married 10 years. And she, she before I had her, I was not near the money-making, impactful person. But since, you know, we've been on the same page, like, we, we want to find time. And coaching clients are basically usually where most of my time is. Because I'm either figuring out ways to improve upon the trainings, the systems, the marketings, the recruitings. And it's all because I want it to be the best example. I want to be the best example. I want my system to be the best example. I don't want to be an empty suit. I don't want to be somebody up here practicing from a poultry like, that where the, the, they don't actually have a successful business or they bankrupted three businesses. But what's your work-life balance? like? Well, my, I mean, this is the thing. Where does it stop? So here's, here, here, here's where it stops. It stops on Saturdays for my kids' baseball games. Um, it stops for vacations. This was spring break. So my wife said to me, Lee, it's kids spring break and it stopped Monday. Even though you were gonna come here, I went, I'm like, damn it, yep, you're right. We're gonna go to Isla Mirada and I met my buddy Jeremy who has a house down there, he's a roofer. And we hung out for two days with my family. I took them inshore fishing, we hung out. And um, you know, we go on trips, whether it's to Disney um, or we, but, I could do a better job at taking my wife out every every week because we love to have date night and taking them out every week is something that I have to do better. And when me and my wife are on the same page, we work out together. So there's times when <laughs> when we're on the same page. Exactly. Right now, right now we're in a we're in a spot because she's she's a partner in my businesses. She takes Jeez. the same stress. So I mean, just. For instance, somebody served us with papers this weekend. It caused a bunch of stress, and you'd think you wouldn't want your wife to encounter this. This guy's asking for something stupid that he doesn't deserve. And, and that kind of stress is something that on a marriage is hard as fuck. I mean, it really is. So my, me and my wife, you know, for one, you know, if you hang out at the watering hole, you'll take a drink. I don't go to bars without my wife or put myself in situations where some conversation could lead to some, I don't, you know, mess around on, you know, I, I hate to say that, but, you know, you look at roofer, you want people to be loyal to you, you want people to, you to be an example, you can't run around and, you know, be, be a guy that's not loyal to your own family, you know what I mean? I see a lot of that in our industry, and it's like, okay, well, I'm sorry that you do that, you're not a bad guy, but, you know, that's not the guy that I want to follow into battle, because those demons, they catch up to you in life, and, um, you know, so, you know, my, my demons are, you know, that, you know, my entire life, when I, when I first failed out of college, you know, you know, drugs, alcohol, whether it was smoking pot or drinking, and, you know, my dad, you know, has helped me, you know, bail me out many times, but since, let's see, the last 10 years, me and my wife, we've lived a really, really, like, chill, fun, work-focused, family existence, but, you know, stopping drinking every day, um, or stopping smoking too much. You know, these are all things that I have to figure out how to do when I'm trying to make the biggest impact and help the biggest, and take on this burden. You're talking about how stressed I am? I'm more stressed when I drink. I'm more stressed, I, you know, I, I quit smoking cigarettes. I used to smoke cigarettes. You know, I quit smoking cigarettes. And, you know, you act like, you know, Lee, are you ADD? Or, yeah, I'm all that shit. But if I can do it, you can do it. And it's, you know, systems, it's the, putting the right people in the right place, it's Rome's not built in a day, but hey, guess what? Good marketing, good, re good recruiting marketing, good sales training, and um, a good system, that, that equals true freedom, like, so that you can go to the Keys in the middle of the week while your team runs, and if that's not the dream for you to have a company that runs, I know that you're able to do an interview with me, so you have it set in place. I mean, so tell me, like, um, how do you do the work, family balance, five kids, wife, how do you do it? I mean, it's a job, it's a priority. Uh, I mean, Saturday, Sunday, I don't work, I mean, I'm there. Uh, I mean, I, I was in my bed yesterday, like, you see my kids, you know, we pray every night, I mean, it's, it's important, you can't. I mean, I work less now than I work, you know, 10 years ago, uh, but it's, uh, you know, my business is run itself, like, my roofing business runs itself. I decided not to grow too aggressively, so I don't have that stress because mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want my kids to suffer. Mm -hmm. Like for me, work-life balance is crucial. For me, if I grow my roofing business 20% every year, I could probably be a 30 million dollar company today. Mm -hmm. 
but my family would not see me. So I decided, okay, I'll do five or five days. I'm gonna work. I'm gonna build a team. I don't want to go down. I don't want to go back. But like, I I enjoy what I have. Like I, if I drive Civic today, I'm happy. If I drive Mercedes Benz, I'm happy. Like I don't need to be your house. I drive the same car for like last three years. Like I'm probably gonna drive that for another three years. I mean, it's a beautiful car, but I don't need to double my business to buy me another car. I don't need. I mean. My house is 4,500 square feet. It's a huge house. Like, I'm set for 10 years in my house. I'm set in my car. Like, what else do you want? I'm American. I'm a capitalist pig. And um, I want to beat Grant Cardone. I want to beat, uh, you know. See, uh, and that's, that's where we're different. I'm Gary Vee. Like, I'm so content. Like, I don't need nothing else. For me, this is, this is important. For me to, like, uh, I tell people all the time. I can go right now and sign quarter million dollar deal, like 250k. I have no emotions, just another check in it. But I, me coming here, doing this interview, mm -hmm. uploading it next week, it gives me goosebumps. What this interview is gonna do? Do a lot for people. And and, and I'll never get paid. Like this video will never pay. Will never. I mean, will pay some. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm building a brand. Like, but influence I'm, I'm a teacher by heart so like this gives me thrills mm -hmm. i mean uh you know it cost me this video probably will cost me like four grand mm -hmm. you know i have two two guys flying in renting a car right. you know we're here but that's what i love mm -hmm. and my wife knows it and guess what tomorrow morning i'll be home yeah and yeah it's one night yeah. i'm not there but i'm there for them yeah. so and that's why i started coaching i mean because i wanted to be able to spend the night and not have to travel so much and now I got reoccurring revenue. I see what you're doing with roofing school. I think it's great, but you know, roofing is profits up, profits down, or if you want to expand, it costs a lot of money. And like, if I want to take this company to a billion dollars or even $13 billion, it's gonna be a lot of years where we do so much growth that I don't, I don't get to pay myself those millions as much as, I, as, as you really want to, as you're doing all this revenue, right? So this steady reoccurring revenue that comes through helping my roofers, my brothers, and raising their tide, and not only does it give me goosebumps all the time, as far as like when we get these results for people where we, we're impactful in their business, it forces me um, you know, to delegate, to have a better system, to not micromanage. I don't have time to micromanage my roofing company because I'm doing uh, this, this, all these other things and they all complement each other. Like my next project is Knockstar University, which is gonna be for uh, the door-to-door -door sales guy for a solar, for alarm. And I've partnered with you know some great door-to-door -door salespeople, and you know we have some roofing coaches that are competitors, and you know Sam Taggart's in that space. Mm -hmm. Well, he doesn't have a competitor, except for now he does, and it's called Knockstar University, and we're gonna have a mastermind, and we're gonna take it over. Well, let, let's talk about this. Actually, my next question. So, how much money? Uh, two next questions about gonna be about um, those services and um, cost. Mm -hmm. How much money does someone need to start a roofing business? Um, so the answer to that question is zero. All you have to do is sell and get your customers to pay you their deductibles and their down payment checks, and then to you know get a, get those materials and 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 get a third, a third, and a third, and collect your money, and you can scale off of profits. But if you're if I'm coming to your city and I want to set up a, a storm and I want to do five million dollars in business, I'm not going to go without fifty thousand dollars cash. And that you could do that on a budget. But what I would do is I'd rent an office. Um, I would, if I didn't have guys, you know, I would go rent a virtual office so that I still had a conference center to hold sales meetings and to interview sales reps. And um, you know, I would go out there and I'd make sure as the owner that the first 25 jobs got sold. I think that's what people don't understand. They think that I pointed my way to success. No, I knocked 50,000 doors, which is many times I went to a new city sure. and I sold the first 25 projects. So um, I want to talk about um, like starting in the value so uh, one of the biggest complaints that i see about sky diamond university and just by talking to people i'm not going to bring uh, like negative comments or anything like that but i want to talk about um, complaints about value mm -hmm. so you charge five thousand dollars for 60 minute sales team this on your uh, this on your website I just took it from the website on the way here five thousand dollars for 60 minute sales team lunch call uh, how did you come up with the value? Like elite focus calls are five thousand dollars listed as a value. Ultimate pitch, direct sales, script three thousand. Skydiving University, unlimited twenty thousand for ten year, uh, users. The feedback that I'm getting on the Skydiving University from the community is, 
um, the value is not there for the dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is just me, you know, asking the question, how do you come up with a value? Well, you'll learn this, Dimitri, because basically once you start coaching people, 40% of the people that buy a coaching don't go to the coaching class. They don't actually show up to the course. They don't open the course at all. I mean, I look at the statistics, 40% of the people True. don't even open it. I mean, that's the truth. So second of all, I would have to say with, you know, you, you look at these other testimonials, these people that are following my program, I grew a guy. No, you definitely, you definitely have success. You definitely have no, people no, who are using I, I think I arguably am generating the best results in the whole thing. And I'll tell you why. Because I generated nine figures in fucking business for my clients, Dimitri. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm be real with you, bro. Like, sure. I, there's I, a I bunch will. of dumb fuck roofers that I don't will. apply the coaching. And I'm gonna be real. Like, when it comes down to it, um, if I train your sales team every single day, all right, and I teach your guys how to sell commercial, I have one guy proclaim roofing. The guy sold seven million dollars in business. That three thousand dollar course you call the commercial masterclass. You think tr that Tyler's happy that he paid three grand for that? The guy sold seven million dollars in business. His name is Eunice. Six hundred thousand square foot and flat roofs. You think he, he thinks he thinks three thousand to sell that commercial business was too much? You see, it's valuable information. I closed Grant Cardone. Who else did that? You see, the thing is, is that I am the one that has the growth in my own roofing business currently in in today a fifty million dollar roofing business. No other other company is offering training. So that that's not the question. I, I think for me the question is if if someone can go and start a business like with no money. Mm -hmm. And you, let's say your program is $10,000. Mm -hmm. You think, I mean, the value is there, but what does it take? Right, does it take personality? Well, first, or of all, first of all, everybody can get a copy of my free book. This is a free book. I gave away a bunch of eBooks, but I, I spent six months, blood, sweat, and tears, 17 years in the field. This is all my secrets. You can have it right now. All you gotta do is cover sh cost of shipping $7, okay? I sell a course for $297 called my Legacy Bundle. And it's got the blue collar marketing method, the commercial masterclass. I started selling it for so cheap because I wanted to make impactful. And, 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 and I wanted to give it to the roofers because it's such a value. But more importantly- um, How do they order it? Well, they go to contractinggrowsecrets.com. Okay. Um, and if you go to Contracting Growth Secrets- We'll put it in the link below. Yeah, if you go to contractinggrowsecrets.com, you can get this. But here's what I have to say. There is a guy who bought my $60,000 a year program. He was a firefighter, only making $60,000 a year. He, he comes to me after making the $15,000 investment, said, I've been selling roofs for five years, I'm good at it. I wanna do big things with my roofing company. I'll join your program. And I said, well, you kinda got in over your head a little bit. You haven't done the minimum half a million dollars in sales. He said, I'm willing to do whatever you tell me, Lee. So we made videos in that room right there. He generated 38 leads with those videos. He closed 30 deals. Uh, one of the deals was a $50,000 deal. They're Facebook leads. They're videos that actually you know, get warmed up. You brand while you create leads. And, and he did it in areas where he had builds and he used testimonial videos to create the leads. Yeah. So they were warm leads and you know, he was also able to hire three sales reps. And while he was closing a $50,000 job, he got a commercial job. A, com a guy who owned a Comfort Inn and Suites said, will you come check my roof? And so this guy got 400,000 in business. Now, listen to this, he overdrafted his bank account. When the ad, because I don't cover ad spend, for the elite program it's five grand a month plus ad spend. So you realistically should be willing to spend five grand a month on, on growing your business along with the money that you invest for my elite program. Well this guy got 400,000 in business in 60 days. Is, is it a franchise? Is it a franchise agreement? Yeah. No, I'm giving it away without it, letting them put their name on it. I'm giving away all my shit. All my job descriptions, all my contracts, all my forms and documents, my fucking CRM, my marketing systems, my personal C CRM time. is part of it? It's all part of it. I give them a fucking working $50 million business in a box and no one's generating results like me. No one, no one is getting fucking $50 million in sales and coaching, okay? So the fucking cocksucker that says that my $5,000 isn't worth it, he's one of these podunk bitch roofers that needs to go fucking work for somebody like you. Well, I'm I'm talking about feedback from the community, like yeah. n not not one guy. I'm talking about the. Uh, uh, well, I'm trying to understand. Maybe you answer to, what is it? What's the difference between successful and not Here's successful? Here's the deal. You're a roofing coach. We sell competing products, so that is a loaded question. Sure. You have do you not have an interest? In I I have the same problem. I have right. like even in my school, like thirty percent of people watch the videos. Like yeah. I, I I get the thing. I'm just talking about the value. Yeah. So if somebody, let's say. Here's the question. If somebody buys $5,000 uh, you know, product, coaching yeah. product. It's a $60,000 year product. Okay. And if they don't use it, they don't log in. How do you go about it? 
So here's how we do it. We have a 90 day like it or leave it program. And since I'm setting up recruiting funnels, they don't get any of the money back because I give them a white labeled system. They get one year user access to my university. I give them all my forms and documents uh, given to them and it's done, okay? But with, they get weekly coaching calls from me, live coaching. Okay. They get um, uh, the marketing team helping them with the lead generation videos. We actually bring them to Naples and shoot content in that studio form. So I have editing costs, I have this, all this equipment I share, I let them do a so podcast. That's part of the that's program? Part, that's part of the program. So they get all that for 15 grand, okay? I coach them on how to make a video that sells. Now no one can fucking sell on video like me, bro. I sell fucking $20 million worth of roofs through my mouth in a studio last year for my own company, okay? okay. I'm just telling you. Like, if my value of sitting in that fucking studio with them, that's my time. My time's worth $5,000 an hour. If I decide to spend it with a roofer, a fucking goofball roofer, I mean, I'm doing it because I want to make my system the most successful system out there. And I will fucking spend, I spent $1.5 million on my company last year. You know, making it better on people. RRCA? No, on fucking Sky Diamonds, bro. I'm spending $3,500 a month delivering for these guys that are paying at this highest level. Now... You, you, see, you see the frustration, the frustration is, is that this book is meant to get me out of just the roofing space. I am way more than just a roof coach. I'm a contractor coach, I'm a blue collar entrepreneur coach, and I'm a sales and recruiting coach for every entrepreneur out there. And I'm gonna impact fucking more people than Grant Cardone and the roofing is just the first stop. And the truth is, is like my roofing company, it's a vehicle to, to fund whatever goddamn mission I want. It's just like Elon Musk. I mean. If he wants to go to the moon and build electric cars, I want to fucking sell roofs and, and build. And what's next? Well, what's, what's next is to have basically um, a working platform where the salespeople are paying for the training. The owners are getting connected with the salespeople. I have two or three top contractors per market. I'm partnering with those contractors and, and they're actually not only just paying me um, for weekly coaching, but they're paying me to come in there in person and they're paying me a percentage of what so they might do. What's, what's your moon then? Your moon is to be like the biggest franchise, biggest company, like going public well, or what, what's the end product? What's your final business model? The final business model, right? Or what do you, what do you, where do you want to take it? Okay, so the final business model is to build the greatest organization of all time in the roofing and door-to-door -door sales industry. And the way I am doing that is through a, a movement created through social media. Now, Sky Diamonds University is specific for roofers. Knockstar University is specific for other door-to-door -door people. I want people to get training and to be able when to... When you launch in that? That's coming. We just launched the book. So the book just got launched. Today was day one. The, Link in comments. Yeah, Contractor Gross, gross Secrets. The, the Knockstar is going to be something very affordable. It's going to only be $50 a month. And it's going to be like they're going to have roofing sales training, roofing closing training, digital door knocking training for the roofing sales rep that they can access for like $50 a month. But they can also learn solar sales training inside the same platform so that that, and then if they want to hook up with a solar installer in their market, there's going to be solar installation partners that are, that are going to allow all of our roofing industry to, to get into the solar business without having back end operations or systems. Now, what's the goal? The goal is to do more business than ABC Supply. The goal is the goal is to to like right now. There's a so the goal of sales. Well, no. The goal is to prove that we have the best system for success in the contracting business, and it's to make as much financial freedom for other people as possible. And since I'm not just a coach, I have a vehicle to plug people into a business, a roofing sales opportunity, a, a solar sales opportunity, and then. I go beyond being a coach. I become, you can plug into my ecosystem. And so I'm building a platform. And one day that platform, like if you said, what's Sky Diamonds and our RCA worth together? I mean, it brings in, you know, over $200,000 a month, Sky Diamonds does, and our RCA is a $50 million roofing company. So someone could walk into this office right now and pay me $30 million for my shit, and I'd tell them no. I have the same thing that you have. I have 22,000 people on my email list. You know, and, and you just don't, you know, realize that, that basically what I'm building is a platform so that, you know, the impact can be the biggest possible. And what I mean by that is I want to do a big event 
just like you, that's bigger than anything the roofing business has ever seen. And I'm going to bring in the door-to-door -door world, I'm going to bring in regular entrepreneurs, I'm going to bring in contractors and roofers. But you see, I don't want to be just stuck to roofing as my niche. Because bro, I teach modern sales systems. And you know, when it comes down to it... You want to be Grant Cardone. Yeah, I want to beat Grant Cardone. <laughs> you, want to be, you want to compete with Grant Cardone. I want to whoop him. I want to put him to sleep. So why do you think uh, these roofers are failing? Do you think it's something to do with the, your personality, my personality? Because I, I deal with the same stuff. Like, you know, somebody buys like right. my, my program and we try to teach them how to make a video. We're well, taking it too personal because like, uh, here's how I say, here's what I say. If the guy goes out and uh, uses your sales strategy, uses your marketing strategy, he's going to have success. The reason why he didn't have, get results is because he didn't do it. But, well, it, it's easy to say. The problem is, the, the problem that I, like, for example, I, I have a call with a guy last week, and he sees the videos, yours, mine, you know, Adam Sands, everyone, but he's a camera shy. I can't, sh I can't be in front of the camera, mm -hmm. you know, like. So I just make the video for you, buddy. Like, that's why I built a studio, and th you know what I did for the firefighter? I made his first video, because he paid 60 grand, he was making 60 grand. I wanted to get him launched so on the So you, right. you was... I was the face. You was the face for his company? Yes. So I'm you put his shirt on? Uh, I had a Sky Diamond shirt on, so basically, uh, uh, but uh, that, that video, it generated like 28 leads, but he, he was able to do something which was basically really good he he made his own and he did a really good job with it but to me like if you're going if you want to learn Facebook like you can get someone else to be the voice and face of your company you don't have to use your own voice and face uh, I would like to we've been sitting here for way too long it's one of the longest interviews I've recorded I would like to finish uh, end this interview with a market research do you like market research okay it's gonna be market research for both you and me I'm going to ask my audience, comment below, what do you think is fair and reasonable price to pay for coaching, for online program, for just, just comment below, no offense will be taken by you or me, no. how, how much would you pay uh, Lehigh to train you or myself? Like I don't care, like what's reasonable in your opinion because... You know, let, me, let me explain something. I am not reasonable and I'm not for everybody. I personally spend no one is. I personally spend an unreasonable amount of money on personal growth. Let me walk you through my coaches. I spend six thousand dollars a month paying Andy uh, Frisella and Ed Milet, Arte Syndicate. I get monthly coaching calls for six grand. And we get boys club. We get to go do events together like once every quarter. I got a high performance coach who's basically like having a mom who talks about what I eat, what I work out, how I sleep, tracks everything through my iPhone watch. And it's almost like a counselor, okay? This guy's helping me uh, be balanced, not have as much stress. He, he costs $2,000 a month and I do weekly calls with him, but he's, he's worth way more than that. He's actually Sam Oven, you know him? He's Sam Oven's coach. Then I have a marketing guy who basically, He's pretty much just like my marketing consultant for my ads for my business because I have my own marketing team. So I literally just pay four grand a month just for someone to advise me on how to spend the marketing budget. And then, you know, whether I'm part of Harmon Brothers University's Billy Jean pool, um, ClickFunnels. Um, and so if you add up how much money I'm spending, it's unreasonable. It's twelve to fifteen thousand dollars a month on personal development. And let me tell you something: pressure. You pay attention to what you pay for, and you want to know how I'm always in your news feed uh, because I I hire uh, the best in the business to teach me what they do, and I implement it. And then I I, you know, I never give up. And 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 so like you know. Well, but I, but I want to ask my audience how much you guys are willing to pay for training. I'm the same way, like I pay Rodney Webb $10,000, the best money I've ever spent, so I'm not cheap. I mean, I go to conferences, you know, average, just to go to one decent conference, you know, fly it, it's always three, four grand. I mean, I'm the same way, I'm spending 25, 30, 40,000 a year, just between events where I go and learn. Right. You know, when you feed, you have to eat. But I wanna ask, like I said, market research. I wanna okay, ask so how, how what, much what you kind guys of training? are willing. There's two different types of training, okay? So my on-demand university is $500 a month. That's, that's what it costs. Now, I offer access, weekly live coaching through Zoom, which is a little different. You can ask, answer, ask me questions, I follow a curriculum. As a matter of fact, the call is today on Thursday. You know, that's a little bit more. There's also live person, like you get coaching one-on-one in person. And you just have to decide what do you want. If you want 
live coaching, if you want calls and access to me, it obviously costs a little bit more money. What do you guys want? Yeah, what do you want? Do you want to do you tell want? us what you want and how much you're appealing, uh, willing to pay for it. Man, it was a Hey, blast. it was a great interview, buddy. Awesome. Appreciate it, man.